Hello, James, and welcome to the Water Cube this year. Would you mind introducing yourself and showing us your name tag? Sure. My name is James Dalton. Mm -hmm. I'm the Water Management Advisor at IUCN headquarters in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. That's my name tag. And uh, how many times have you been to World Water Week? Uh, this is actually my second time. I've been invited a few times, but I've just never been able to make it. Okay. And what do you think of it? What, what has brought you back this year? Um, we have a lot of products that we're uh, putting out there this year, a lot of things that have come out of long-term um, programs. So we're want to disseminate all of our information mm -hmm. and it's also really important just to connect with people to discuss new ideas uh, there's a lot of business issues going on at the moment so it's really good to understand what, what, what the latest things are in water as we prepare for the forum next year. Great and what are some of the latest things that come to mind that you want to, to tell us about here at World Water Week? Well, one of the things that I want to talk about is natural infrastructure mm -hmm. and that sort of is a sort of an unusual term because infrastructure implies built and concrete uh, for irrigation systems, for dam control uh, and also for urban growth. And But our take on natural infrastructure is recognising the role of ecosystem services from natural systems that operate like infrastructure. So for example, wetlands are, are operate as reservoirs, um, they operate as uh, cleaning uh, for improving water quality and storing water and as buffering during high flow events mm -hmm. and for uh, storing water during drought periods. So it has a role as a piece of infrastructure. And this is something that's quite relevant with regard to the theme of providing water to the urban world. That's right. So when, you, when uh, cities grow and they start to expand and take the resources from the area, quite often not very good long-term strategic planning is really put in place for how you actually look at where your water is coming from. So it's, it's about connecting the urban environment with its surrounding environment to mm -hmm. understand where it takes water from, to put it into the utility to provide water for people, and then where the waste goes back into the river environment. It's about understanding the downstream impacts of cities and urban areas, mm -hmm. keeping the water clean for the next user, which could be another city, or it could be a wetland, or it could be the coast and the marine environment. So really right. connecting the city with its with the, the, the situation it's in in river basins. And seeing as you are based in Geneva, Switzerland, does that city have any examples of how it is connecting the natural resource of water with its urban Well, actually, um, uh, Lake Geneva is quite interesting in it's a transboundary lake. It, it has borders mm -hmm. with France and Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And together, the uh, concerned parties around the lake, in terms of uh, councils, local municipalities, and just and general citizens, have uh, organised into uh, an organisation which protects the lake and they look at p controlling and monitoring uh, agricultural pollution and freshwater pollution around that lake which includes the cities and the urban environments. Mm -hmm. Geneva gets most of its drinking water from the lake so the lake has to be ever clean, certainly clean so that they can then actually drink it and then the discharge back into the, into the system. Great, it's good to hear from you. Thank you for sharing your ideas and Great. your goals for the future as well. Great, thank you.